so I think I'm going to be here for a while. Right, I know it's been a while, apologies, but I've just been really, really busy, not had the time to upload anything and edit anything for ages, because I've just been 
busy working, but in addition to busy working, you've got all the other uh, you've got all the other things you've got to contend with. You're a you're a business owner, and it's on you to do everything. So whether that's pricing, jobs, invoicing, arranging maintenance, inspections, MOTs, paying road tax, paying sorting your insurance, so everything, it just goes on and on and I just haven't had the time. So what I thought I'd do to get started, just one second, so busy I can't even make a bleeding video. Hello? Hey, you alright? Yeah. Well, I'm on route now, but the M6 is shut at um, Carnforth. So as long as the queues, if the queues back as far as Lancaster, I'm coming off at Lancaster. Right. Well, I'm coming from south anyway, so um, I'm. I'm yeah, I just didn't know how far back the queue was to Lancaster from Camforth Eddy North, you see. So, right, well, I, I'm just creeping past Preston now because I think there's been another accident. But once I'm, I'm coming up to M55, um, so. I'd, I'd, I'd say 40 minutes from there. Yeah. Yeah, there's no issue doing it. Just, just be wary of the time and the fact I've got to get back to Blackpool tomorrow morning. And then obviously it means running back empty from from Hull then all the way to the door. Um, I, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, probably another. Well, if that second drops Wakefield, it put is it Wakefield that that second drop? Wakefield's probably. 40 mile two hull in it. So there's there's Yeah, well I'm gonna do Sheffield first, then Wakefield. And then Hull. It's just, really it's just that difference between w Wakefield to Hull and let's say back to Wakefield where I would have been anyway. It's probably about 80 mile, is it? I don't know. What, what, where? Right. So it could work field to hull and then end up 55. So it's like an extra 100 mile on what I'm already doing, isn't it? In, in essence. Um, well. do it and then I'll, I'll, I can sort some out with you after if you want, we, we can work together on it, do you, do you know what I mean? So, um, just, just do it that way. He sometimes works it out on, on my behalf and I trust him to do so, so.
Yeah. yeah. interesting regarding the running cost of pricing the jobs where I go I would uh, you know the, 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 the basic um, overview of how I operate so before I do get into that what I'm going to do is just film this week um, just to show you what I do and then after this video I'll get into each little bit in a bit more detail it is going to be more of an overview. I'm not going to delve into it too far with regards to how much I charge on every job and how, how much I, I pay for certain things and how much I charge for certain things because that's my business. I'm just going to show you um, an overview. Because if I start talking about costs, detailed cost with regards to I don't mind the, discussing the operating costs but um, when it comes to pricing jobs I'm not going to go into that much detail because I don't want you I, well I don't want my customers knowing I'm, I, I, I'm putting online how much they pay me to do jobs and, and I, I, I don't want to I don't want to do that and it's not really relevant because all I'm going to be doing is giving you an overview and if you're interested in being an a driver if we get into how much things cost me and if you're serious about it you should be able to work out yourself how much you should be charging it doesn't matter what I'm charging so if we get into it and I work out it costs X amount per mile just to run the truck and break even, you obviously charge more than that because you're in it to earn, to earn a profit. But everybody's different when it comes to your to your running your running costs. You know the value of your vehicle determines part of your running costs. The, the, the price of fuel at any given time determines your running costs, your insurance determines. You know, there's lots of different things that, that you've got to factor in to initially just get how much, let's say, per mile or per day you need to bring in to, to cover the operation. And everybody's different. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll delve into that a, a bit more later on. So, like I say, for now, we'll just concentrate on me showing you a typical week. So, this particular, it's now Monday, but let's say this working week started on Friday because I did a collection in Glasgow. I got a load up to Glasgow on um, Thursday, picked up in Redditch Thursday afternoon for delivery into Glasgow Friday morning. So I went up, did that, tipped that, and I was quite lucky because on my on, on my way up to, to Glasgow, I got a phone call um, from a company who'd seen my online presence and asked if I was available to do a collection out of Glasgow on Friday for either same day delivery or delivery this morning which is Monday so I didn't have enough time on Friday so obviously did the Redditch Glasgow tipped that reloaded Glasgow drove back down to the northwest got up this morning went down to um, 
Trafford Park, unloaded at Trafford Park, which is this big, this big container, uh, this, this 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 big wooden crate that um, I believe's got fibre, some fibre cloth in it, or something like that, that's coming for export to uh, Israel. So that's been dropped off in the freight terminal now at Trafford Park. regular customers who have a fleet of transit, well, transit sprinter size vans and seven and a half tonners, um, have a couple of customers that they can't always help out because they haven't got a big enough vehicle. So whenever they get a job which requires a longer bed uh, than a seven and a half tonner or goods that are heavier, too heavy for the seven and a half tonne, they'll give me a ring. So they gave me a ring, it was either Thursday or Friday, asking if I could do this run today, which I'm on which I'm on route to. Uh, so I've taken to Trafford Park, currently on my way up to, that was eight o'clock this morning, currently on my way up to Lancaster to collect what should have been two drops. I believe Sheffield and Wakefield. phone call was to say that there was a van in collecting a job for Hull but that won't fit on the van so they're asking if I can add that drop on to the two that I've already got. So we're on our way to uh, Lancaster to collect this. I'm not going to film loading because it's all handball and takes quite a while and it's just boring. So the weather's it's been pouring down all morning and it's as you've probably heard on the phone call the M6 is shut at Carnforth which is the junction after Lancaster so if the queues back past Lancaster we're going to be get delayed but I can't see the queue being that long even if it's shut at uh, Carnforth but we're coming off at Lancaster anyway and kind of going away from what I think would be the diversion so hopefully once we get up to Lancaster, we can whip off the cross and go and do that collection. Right, so we're off at Lancaster, all right, even though the next junction up's closed, there's no queuing traffic, so we're now off at um, Lancaster. It's on the outskirts of Lancaster anyway, so we're off going to Lancaster. The issue we've got now, it's ten past ten. They've thrown the extra hull drop on, so I believe it's Sheffield. Go to Chef. Well, probably go to Sheffield first. Then um, Wakefield. No, it's a Wakefield postcode, so we'll say Wakefield. Then Hull. Probably be pushed for time if it's the type of place that close around four o'clock. If it opens later, then I'm going to bet the whole drop, um, the last one. Because for the same customer, I've got to get back across to the northwest tomorrow morning for a collection at, uh, at Blackpool. Different goods, but collection at uh, 
Blackpool they've said between 8 and 9 for delivery to Newcastle so as long as there's no more hold ups today we should be alright because if there is any hold ups we can't get Hull off tonight I don't know whether the collection at Blackpool will fail tomorrow morning or whether I've all I might have all day to do it, so even if I tip Hull tomorrow morning, I'll have enough time to get back across to Blackpool and then up to Newcastle. I mean, it'll be a full day. Um, I just don't know whether there's any time constraints on it with regards to the delivery, but we'll see. The main thing is with things like that is always keep the customers up to date. You know, I've already made them aware of times and what could happen, just in case. Because the people I'm doing the job for, for are um, another transport company and the, the job in Blackpool is another one of their customers. So as long as I keep them informed, they can keep their customer informed. So then, um, no problems further down the line because the sooner they know you might be running a bit late it gives them more time to rearrange things or just keep everybody in the loop don't just set off get delayed without letting people know because communication is the key key to getting the job done but it's also the key to get to get repeat work if they know they can trust you to do it if they they can trust you to communicate and keep them up to date they'd rather have you doing the work than somebody who just drives around and thinks oh I'll get there when I get there and I'll just ring them when I've done the delivery that's that's no good if they're expecting you to do another delivery that you'll then be there for. So anyway, five minutes away from the collection. Right, loaded at uh, Lancaster, three drops. Like I said before, Sheffield, Wakefield, Hull. The way they've loaded it, I might do Wakefield first, drop down to Sheffield and then up to Hull. It's kind of a triangle, so it doesn't really matter. And I'll probably go across the 62 to Wakefield because I don't like going over, over tops to Sheffield and on the go around. So now it's quarter to 12. So it's quarter to 12, I'm just leaving Lancaster. I've got those three drops to do today. I'll get two off, I can't, I can't see. I can't see me having enough time to get to Hull to get that done. But I, I need to do it to get back to Blackpool tomorrow morning, so. In, the, in this situation where you're doing the work on behalf of someone else like I said before communication is key I'm keeping them updated they know completely um, what the situation is so if it all does go wrong and I can't get back to Blackpool it, it is on them it's not on me because I, I'm, I'm telling them um, my estimations and my thoughts on it which they're happy enough with and they're just going to go with the floor. Now, if it was me personally doing proper direct jobs for those customers, I'd probably not have taken on the Blackpool just in case. Because if anything does go wrong, it won't be 
it, it will be me not being able to do it, but the, the people in Black Blackpool will feel let down by the company I'm doing the job for. It won't be me letting them down, if you, if you know what I mean. Because I started my day in Blackburn, went down to Trafford Park, drove up to Lancaster, now I've got a, I had 15 minutes in there while I was waiting for them to sort the stuff out, um, but I'm still going to need another 30 minutes break before I get to my first drop because I've, I've already done nearly three and a half hours. So we can, so in essence, even though it's 10 to 12, let's say it's 20 past 12. It's not happening. Just had a phone call now saying that the delivery at Hull they'll not take the delivery after half three and I'm not going to get there till about five o'clock so that's not happening so what we've decided is I'll still go ahead and do the Wakefield and the Sheffield get up to Hull the first thing tomorrow morning when they open at eight o'clock get that done at 8 o'clock because I should have been in Blackpool between 8 and 9 that's now been cancelled so once I'm empty in Hull at the moment that's me empty ready to go um, on another job so once I park up later on I'll have a quick look online and see if I can pick anything up 
there's nothing immediately in hull which can be a bit hit and miss I'll just aim for Leeds, maybe hang around Leeds or Sheffield for a bit and, and, and look for something or I may even get a phone call beforehand um, to see whether or not I'm available and I've just, I've just I've just been looking at the paperwork and seeing that the, the delivery in Sheffield I've actually done before for this particular customer. Um, it, it wasn't familiar until I looked at it on the map and then I realised that I'd, I'd done it before and it's um, a guy that trades from home. So I'm going to be there longer than I originally thought anyway, so that 5 o'clock at Hull would have been later anyway because I know when I get to this delivery at Sheffield it's just going to be me and this bloke unloading the uh, unloading the truck and we've got uh, industrial shutter doors and I think they're all about 6 metres long and there's about 15 of them which is a pain in the backside especially in the rain I'm getting too old to keep handballing stuff like that like everywhere but it's not very often a lot of the jobs I've had driving have involved handballing and residential deliveries and multi-drop and all that kind of thing and while I've been working on my own with a truck generally 95% of my jobs are just one hitters You know, in the decent one it is as well, it could, you know, up into Scotland, South Wales, Kent, Cornwall, East Anglia. So, the, the, even though the job's a bit, it's not more stressful, but even though the job involves a lot more because you're dealing with the admin, the actual driving side of it is, is probably the best job I've ever had. I don't know whether you've you've probably not noticed this is a 26 tonner so it's a rigid um, and I know a lot of people think oh you can't get jobs doing one eighters and nights out and tramping and all the rest of it um, driving rigid you need your class one well I've been doing it it's a year a year this month I, I've had this truck and I'm away every week, all week. And like I say, just doing one hitters. So it's a, it, it would be a better job than the class one jobs I've had. Because even the class one jobs were um, maybe on days were maybe on days with a Moffat delivery to building sites and you're in and out of a depot, kind of non-stop doing local deliveries. Other times it's been the likes of Herbie's and Royal Mail, which is easy, easy, easy enough, but they're just odd hours due to the nature of parcel deliveries. You tend to find a lot of the shifts start in the afternoon. So even though you, let's say, home every night, you kind of don't, still don't see anyone because you, you're in bed till dinner time then you go into work and you're working all through the evening up to the early hours of the morning so even then you don't uh, have much of a social life and then the other class one job I had was Moffat again running out of a factory maybe do, doing two or three nights out a week but you, you always knew that you had to get the deliveries done to be back to the yard to get um, next load, your next run, whereas doing this, when I finish in Hull in the morning, in theory, I could just say, all oh, right, I'm packing up in Hull now all day, I'm not, I'm not doing anything, which is no good, I mean, I'm, it's just kind of an example that you, when you're all boss, you can pick and choose and do what you want.
like so anyway now we just went up Windy Hill into Yorkshire and then uh, we'll be dropping down and doing the drop at Wakefield. Right, so I'm just coming up to the drop at um, Wakefield. I've just been on the phone to the guy at Sheffield because there's an instruction on the delivery note to ring with an ETA a couple of uh, a couple of hours prior. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned it before. I can't remember, but he, he trade from home. But he actually requested the delivery direct to site so he's currently kicking off with the uh, with the supplier because he, he, he wants it going wants it going to site on a farm he doesn't think an HGV will fit on the uh, lane leading up to the farm So he's kicking off about that and he's kicking off about the fact that he actually requested it to site and we've been given the uh, his home address where occasionally he does get a delivery because he's just got a van and this is heavy industrial doors that I think, are, I think they're just short as seven metres long so they'll not fit in his van. So I'm just waiting for a phone call. Now, I believe this one is just off this roundabout somewhere. Although it is literally off the roundabout. That's back in there, right on the roundabout. Come on, you can see what I'm doing. No patience.
do you, do you need to do you need to get round the back of me or you all right there? I just don't know where I'm going yet. So that's the Wakefield drop off. Weren't too bad because it were a little uh, little factory with a couple of blokes there, so it's not too bad when you're handballing when there's um, enough people there to give you a lift. You know, stand on back of truck, just pass things down to people who then take them inside. Problem is sometimes you'll get to places. A shop and all the fitters are out on site doing jobs and you turn up and it's right just leave it round the back and you, you physically can't I mean I hate doing it I think the only benefit is it's the only exercise I get so I suppose look at it from a glass half full perspective right so anyway that's done I'm now on my way to Chef, it's like north of Sheffield, south of Huddersfield, you know, like Penniston kind of way. Um, just spoke to the guy and I'm going doing the uh, meeting him at the farm. By all accounts, it's at the end of a, a little... a little track. But I've been told you can easily get in and get out, turn, get in, turn around and get back out, so... We'll see when we arrive. I just wanted to get there before it goes down. Clocks went back, um, went back an hour last night. I mean, it's not going to go dark too early yet, but I didn't want to start faffing about looking for a farm down the country late in the dark. So we'll, we'll be there in half an hour. So luckily, it'll still be daylight. The other benefit from, I suppose, my point of view, when you're doing jobs like this, as soon as you arrive, you get tipped. Or if you, as soon as you get to the, the, the loading point with the smaller businesses, you tend to get loaded straight away. So you're loaded straight away, unloaded straight away, so there's no hanging around. So like that last video where we was hanging around a bit and everyone were criticising me for some reason without even knowing how much I charge him for the job, how much waiting time I got. You lot seem to think that you knew better. Um, so just for clarity on that last video, I got paid waiting time. The comment on the video was related to how much more money will I get because I was still sat there I've not completed it, so I know how much more I'd get. The video wasn't about how much I got anyway, it was just about um, the, the job in general, whether you're an owner driver or an employed driver. To show people how you can get messed about, that, that was it, nothing to do with the money. Nothing about whinging, it was just a factual video on on an event on a, on a particular day, just because it's a negative 
let's say negative video it doesn't mean people are whinging and moaning about it they're just showing you what it's like you know the fact the fact is I was kept waiting not whinging about it I'm just showing especially if you're watching these videos thinking of becoming a driver you need to know the downsides as well as the upsides so if I if I show you some of the down the downsides doesn't mean I'm whinging about them I'm just highlighting the fact that there, there are some downsides and it's not always you know it's not always the driver's fault but anyway that's that's by the by no doubt people start with negative comments about the fact that I'm going to uh, Hull and not doing the Blackpool job anymore, but that's that's transporting changes. When you're when you're doing something on behalf of someone else, in, in essence, forget the owner driver thing. If you go into work, you're giving your day's work, and during that day. The, the gaffer rings up or whatever and says, oh, change your plan, da 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 that, That's all that's happened with me. I've not, I'm not moving the goods direct for the manufacturer. I'm moving them for um, the transport provider. So that transport provider have all their own vehicles and work a certain way. So then I fall into the work pattern for that particular day. So they say, right, your job today is this, go to ABC. I'm glad you rang because I'm going to ring you up. Go on. When? Anytime this week? <laughs> could you do me a favour and... I could do it but it all depends where I am tomorrow. I've, I've, I've got a delivery tomorrow in uh, in Hull, tomorrow morning and what I can do is look for a job from Hull down to Birmingham and if I get one then do that for you do you know what I mean? otherwise you're going to you, otherwise I'm going to have to if you want it doing I'm going to have to charge you for driving from Hull to Birmingham back up to Sheffield deliver it tomorrow as well so if it's ready so all right all right thank you cheers bye bye right so I'm gonna have to watch the, the, the this again because I don't know where I were up to So if they say the the job is from A to B to C and then through that day the manufacturer chucks another drop on or takes a drop off, there's nothing you can do about that. So you fall into the work pattern. So whether I'm a, let's say, independent working for another transport provider They've got their own drivers driving their own trucks. We all know things change through a day. So the people we're moving the goods on behalf of can and will change things. It's not to screw you over and cut, cut, your, jet, cut your day up. It, it's just the nature of the business. So in this particular circumstance, the third drop in Hull was on another vehicle but it was too i think the vehicle would have been overloaded or the the, the 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 goods were too long they wouldn't fit in it so they had to come up with another option to keep their customer happy and get the goods out which was well throw it on me right which in turn affected the blackpool to newcastle job 
but somebody else is doing that now. And the fact they put the extra drop on me meant um, there was an extra charge for me to do that. And the, trans the transport provider I'm working for are happy enough with that and the manufacturer are happy enough with that because it's the it's the nature of it's the nature of business, isn't it? You 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 pay people to do things for you because um, you're not going to do it for free. So they know straight away that, that, that there'll be an additional cost. Um, and none of it's about people trying to pull wool over people's eyes and screw people down on price or trying to sneak in extra, you know extra drops in and all the rest of it it just is the nature of transport and anybody any of you who've, who've been in it long enough know that you know what happens if you i don't know you pick a load up for a for an rdc you get there late and the the the, the goods are refused that cocks your next job up it gets sorted but you've got to realize everything isn't straightforward so it makes no makes no difference to me. My day, if it had done the original two, would have would have finished early evening. As it is, I've I've now made my way up to well, I'm in Ghoul at the moment, so I've now made my way up to Ghoul, ready to do Hull in the morning. So that extra mileage, that extra time, the 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 so the night the the night away, and then delivering tomorrow morning obviously comes with with an extra cost so I've, I've not lost anything and the phone call I know I said I'd get to um, I'd get to Hull and then maybe look online to see if I could pick anything up but I didn't need to do that because the phone call I received earlier probably the last phone call you saw me you saw me take was one of my um, I'll say more direct customers um, who need something picking up from Birmingham and taking up to Sheffield and it has to be there for Wednesday and I've told them I can do it tomorrow which is Tuesday which they're happy with so they're happy to pay for um, me to run down from Hull first thing in the morning after I've tipped this collecting Birmingham and then back up to Sheffield. So I'm happy because I've got a, you know, an half decent run. That I mean, it's just a, like an an inter depot, I think, tra transfer of goods. So both both depots are happy because one's getting the stuff collected that needs collecting, the other one's getting the stuff um, a day early, and then that product is available to to the the customer on the day that customer was probably promised it so they so everybody's kept everybody happy and and i know there might be um a higher transport charge just 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 by the the nature of me running down to birmingham and back up but the fact everybody's kept happy and they know the job will get done is is what a lot of people look for i think there's too many people seem to think you know, they bang on about haulage rates are too low, haulage rates are no, I'd never do it, haulage rates are too low. Well, they're only too low if somebody else, well, from my point of view, haulage rates would be too low if somebody else was telling me how much they are going to pay me to do the job. Well, I don't work like that. People ring me and ask me how much I will charge them to move the goods. And that should be the same in any business, but for some reason in haulage, and um, I think you tend, I mean, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but you, you tend to get it in container transport where you'll get a, a mega con container company advertising for owner drivers. And a lot of new owner drivers will start on containers because they promise, they, they get like, I've never done it, so just take this with a pinch of salt because I might be going slightly off kilter but um, a lot kind of promise um, 
maybe minimum miles per week at a particular cost per week um, beneficial fuel cards you can buy a truck off them and rent a trailer or you know all, all that kind of thing and it, it and I know years ago the likes of Hanbury Davis and Maritime if you used to look through the old truck magazines I'd, I'd have a, a, a centre spread with all the second hand trucks for sale but, but when I mean second hand I mean some of them were only a year old, two years old so they sell them to you as an owner driver with guaranteed work but they don't say the guaranteed work we're going to pay you a pittance and that's the thing, there's too many big companies telling the transport provider how much they're willing to pay. Well, it doesn't work like that. You say to them, well, if you want me to move your stuff, it's going to cost you what I say, not what you say. Because um, you wouldn't do it in any other line of work, would you? You know, if you even if your window cleaner comes round... You don't say, oh, Mr. Window Cleaner, I want you to clean my windows and I'm only going to pay you five quid. You're, go you're going to say to the window cleaner, how much do you charge to clean my windows? You're going to say to the builder, how much will you charge to build me an extension? You're, you're going you're gonna to say to the guy at the car wash, how much are you going to charge to clean my car? You don't, you don't turn up at the car wash and say, oh, I'm only going to give you, you know, three quid not the seven quid you want and for some reason in transport I, I don't know whether it's people going in I, w I wouldn't I wouldn't call it naivety but it tends to be the people who bang on about haulage rates are too low the money's rubbish it's I'd never I'd never buy a truck and run because haulage rates but you ask these people what are the haulage rates I don't know. The haulage rate is whatever you're going to charge, not what somebody's going to tell you they're going to pay. I mean, they may they may offer um, a decent rate, which is fair enough, but I think too many people fall into the trap. And like I say, I mean, it might be different now, but with the containers just going in, buying a tractor unit, you get the, you know, the the the, the so-called benefits. Well, anybody can get a fuel card. So why they say that they, be, you know, it's it's them trying to sell you something, you know, they'll 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 rent the trailer, they'll say they've got like decent fuel discounts. Well, they might do, but if you shop around as an owner driver, you can get half decent discounts as well on on your fuel cards. Um, but then you're tied in because if 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 you buy the truck at, they may even offer it you at. Um, I'm not say a discounted rate, but a, a favourable, even a you know a, a lease or a rental or something like that. It, it if you commit to working for them, you might find that they'll sell, lease, rent a little bit lower than if you weren't going to do work for them. But if you do the work for them, you may be you you may have to sign a contract and be a, a dedicated haulier for them but you're a dedicated haulier at the price they dictate, not the price you want to charge. And I think that's where a lot of owner-drivers, or not necessarily owner-drivers, but even people looking in from outside start with this... The, the, rates, are, the rates are crap because... Joe Bloggs containers are only paying £1.20 a mile or £1.50, £1.60 a mile. And, you know, Joe, Joe Smith Logistics, that big worldwide mega company, are only paying this, that and the other. Well, they're only pay, paying it because you're, will, you're, you're willing to do it at that price. I don't know where I'm going with this now and I don't even... I just started talking like this. Um, right, so f forget that, forget that now. Um,
Go on, chicken. Where's all the rest of the ladies? Go on through that gap. Go on through the gap. Go on. No, mustn't be that gap. Come on, chick. Go on, keep going. Come on, it's really bit. Right, so that's the uh, the Sheffield off kind of Penniston. Penniston where. It's now 20 past four. Uh, and Hull shuts at half three, so I'm just going to make my way up towards Hull now and get the freight in the morning. Make it quick because I've got a red light flashing saying that my battery's low. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. I was gonna, I was gonna go into Ghoul and park at the old truck stop in Ghoul, um, but I'm on glues now. I can't for the life of me remember how long glues has been here. It's not been here that long. I mean, it, it's probably longer than I think. It's probably a, a few years now, and I've only ever stopped here once prior, um, and that was when it first opened. Um, even though I can't remember doing so I know I did so <laughs> so as I was as I was coming along the uh, 62 then I looked at the time and I thought well it's only half an hour to Hull um, I'll nip in here um, I mean it, it's it's secure even though I've seen certain things on Facebook regarding the odd slash curtain and one thing and another but you're gonna get you're gonna get that anywhere um but i was disappointed that there's no cafe 
and it's a truck stop. I know there's a McDonald's next door, but the the the, the building that um, I'm sure had the cafe and it's all all closed up, so it's fend for yourself or have a McDonald's. And the other thing is, um, I know a lot of people don't like stopping on motorway services or even truck stops because uh, a lot of employed drivers don't, for some reason won't get reimbursed off their employer for uh, overnight parking. Um, so what I tend to do is I, I will stop in certain laybys in certain parts of the country but I do tend to try and head for the truck stops or if I'm just on a you know, I want it to, you know, from A to B, and I need to use a lot of my time, it's easier just to come off and use the services, even though they're expensive. Um, I tend not to do it when I'm empty, but the thing is, when you're carrying other people's goods, if anything, if I parked up in a lay-by tonight, and someone interfered with the load, or maybe stole some of the goods off the back um, it's the type of thing where certain insurance companies would start arguing the toss and they wouldn't want to pay out or they wouldn't want to pay out the full amount because I'll not say they expect you to park secure but they at least expect you to use your common sense when it comes to overnight parking so if you park you know on the notorious stretches of the A1 um, with goods on board and you wake up in the morning and half of it's gone an insurance company are going to say well we, we're not paying out because you didn't you didn't I'm not saying you didn't try but there may have been better options so whenever I'm loaded it, it can be a, a, a motorway services or a truck stop um, because it then shows you've at least made an effort to keep things secure. So if anything happens tonight, I know it's not on the truck stop, you can't blame the truck stops, you can't blame the services, you can't blame the drivers. The only people to blame for stuff getting nicked off the back of trucks are the bleeding thieves. And I'm sick of seeing posts on Facebook when drivers have had stuff nicked and people say, well, it's the driver's fault, they shouldn't have parked there. Well, no, it's not the driver's fault. It's the bleeding, thieving gets fault. But that's why, if you're loaded, I, 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 I don't know why you're parking a lay-by. I get it if you're not being reimbursed, of course. But you, you've just got to... Because in essence you're liable. Well, not liable. It, it's a liability. So if if there's two or three options, is it lay by on the A1, motorway services that anyone can just drive in and drive out, or a truck stop that's got a fence around it, even though it might not be secure. The truck stop with a fence around it shows that you've, you know, done done what's expected. To, to keep the load safe and then if it does go wandering the insurance company are more liable to to pay out the full amount because you don't want to I, I wouldn't want to park in a lay-by I've half my stuff nicked the insurance company say they're not paying out because then that liability falls on me and I've got to I've got to foot the bill for I don't know 10 grand's worth of stuff 50 grand's worth of stuff you know and obviously you can't afford to do that um, yeah, so again, I've just started waffling and I don't know what I'm, I don't know what the point of me waffle is. So, right, we'll leave it at that then. I'm, I'm parked up and uh, I'll probably be up at, I'll, pro I'll probably aim to get into Hull for half seven so I'm uh, all ready and prepared for when they turn up. I have, I've not got a lot on out of the three drops. This was the, uh, the smallest amount of stuff but I think looking at it there's just maybe two 
long lengths that were over six meters that, that wouldn't fit on the other vehicles so I think it was more size than weight but uh, Right, so I've just got the drop off in Hull without any issues. Like I said yesterday, all these um, smaller businesses don't keep you waiting very long because there's never, you know, obviously there's never a queue, never a queue at a, re a really small business. Occasionally there might be another trucker of around the van in front of you one of their own vehicles being loaded but generally you're uh, straight in and straight out so I got uh, unloaded straight away just coming out of hull now um, gonna go and fuel up then make my way down to Birmingham for the collection for uh, back up to Sheffield the same customers just been on um, after delivering at Sheffield there might be something to pick up at the same location to take back to Manchester so hopefully that'll happen but the um, I think they're open 24 hours at Manchester so even if it's later on tonight I'll still get it off if not it'll be first thing in the morning again on my way down to Birmingham for the uh, <coughs> Sheffield collection and now I've just had confirmation via a phone call um, that the same customer want me to collect from Sheffield and take to Manchester. So that now ties me up for the rest of, rest of today and maybe tomorrow morning, like I said before, I think they're open 24 hours, so I may even get it off tonight. I'll just I'll just see what time it is. If not, I'll get it off first thing in the morning. As I previously said, I wanted the videos 
to be more about the the, the operating side of it because there's plenty there's plenty of people on uh, on YouTube now doing the filming the deliveries filming the roads filming um, <coughs> you know everything they do as a driver so there's, there's, there's plenty of content like that so I'm not just going to keep adding to that because it's pointless this is, this is purely a um, a way of showing you a typical week before I delve into the uh, ins and out of operating on yourself or even just the ins and outs of um, transport really you know what happens in the background whether you're a driver whether you want to be an owner driver whether you're an employed driver even if you I don't know, you work in a bank and you, you're just interested to find out how the, how the whole thing works and the uh, differences within. Because I already have comments now saying um, that the, the way I'm working, I suppose that my business model's all wrong, I shouldn't be doing what I mean. There was a the, the comment the other day. Um, Regarding, oh, what was it? it? It was along the lines of you'll only make it pay if you can book plenty of jobs in advance. Well, I do a lot of ad hoc work, which is based around urgent deliveries. So a, a lot of the jobs are can you pick it up now? Oh. Yeah, not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. As in this Thursday. No, I've got, I, I do a regular run every, I've got a regular day booked in the diary every Thursday till New Year, I'm afraid. Alright, if, if anything changes, let me know, because I'll, I'll be able to fit it in if, uh, if every, you know, if, if things go tits up your end, I, I can fit it in next week, but I, I doubt it, but it's just an option if it, uh, if anything changes. Yeah, so in, in addition to the regular customers, who that was, um, who were able to book me a week or two in advance, a few days in advance to do a, a, a particular job. In addition to that, I've got other customers who, who do the... Um, do the urgent deliveries so when I get a comment saying your business models I can't remember like I say I can't remember exactly your business models all wrong you should be you, you should be booking jobs days and days in advance well even this job I'm going to now um, is a regular customer who normally book me a few days in advance but because one of the depots hasn't got uh, hasn't got the product they need it's urgent that I go and pick it up and take it from one depot to another that's why I'm getting paid to drive down to Birmingham and then back up to Sheffield people have got to realise Transport isn't always, right, we've got a contract and we move 26 pallets of cornflakes every day from Trafford Park to an RDC in South Wales. 
and that's how a lot of it works. It, you know, it's a it's a regular it's a regular full load, certain day of a week from A to B. Yeah, you can book things like that in advance. But there's always jobs out there where people, you know, it might be a cock up, it might be a piece of machinery, it might be, it, 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 it could be anything. It might be a delivery where it, it, it's turned into an urgent delivery because another transport company have let the customer down. So then they're running around like headless chickens because they've, they've, they've no vehicle. So you can never, some, some, like I say, some jobs are booked in advance. And, and a lot of jobs are just on this ad hoc basis where I'll get a phone call. Where are you? I'm in Trafford Park. Oh good, we've got a load going, a load going out of Rochdale. Needs picking up tonight and delivering to Cardiff first thing tomorrow morning because a, a machine's broke down in, in Cardiff and without this part they can't fire up the factory so all the workers will be stood around with their fingers up the backside not doing anything and those jobs are, are better paying jobs so I can't see how it's a um, uh, I can't see how it's wrong because there's always a need for that you've just got to look on the motor how many courier vans do you see flying around how many motorcycle couriers do you see bobbing around in London you know a bloke goes to work in London goes in an office he's forgot his briefcase because he's left it at home and he's got his laptop in it wife's not going to stick a stamp on it and post it no they're going to ring a courier up deliver it now we don't we'll go and pick it up we don't care how much it costs he needs it and I know that's an example of a motorcycle courier, but the same thing happens with bigger vehicles and bigger deliveries. I mean, I've done jobs up to Aberdeen. Now, Aberdeen, there's a lot, lot of industry with the offshore um, oil and gas industry. So if anything breaks on a, an offshore rig, They've got to, I don't know, I don't know whether they'll half the capacity of what they're producing because, a, I don't know, a compressor's blown up and they need a new one on or they need a spare part. You can't book that in a week in advance, can you? You just get a phone call and it's right, it's ready now, can you pick it up within the hour and get up to Aberdeen within the day? And if you can, they'll pay you, and I'm not saying you'll get a substantial amount, but it, the, the, the rate for doing that will be a lot better than if it's 26 pallets of the cornflakes that go up to Aberdeen every week. So there's, there's, never, a, there's never a wrong business model when it, when it comes to transport. Because like in any industry, there's, 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 there's loads of examples how things work differently. A lot of people think, yeah, you just put it on a truck and go and everything's the same. Well, it, it, it's it's just not like that at all. And if it's a failed business model, why have I been trading for 12 months now without any problems through Covid? I think I did my, my first job the middle of October 2020, it's now November 2021. And look, I've not, I mean, alright, it's only Tuesday, it's only Tuesday morning, but I've not been sat around doing anything. I had, I'm, I'm going, I know I'm going over it again, but I had, I was up in Glasgow, got a load up to Glasgow Thursday, back down on Friday with a load from Trafford Park, tipped that, went to Lancaster the two drops yesterday as well, did Hull this morning, now go into Birmingham to collect for Sheffield, deliver at Sheffield, reload at Sheffield, go to uh, Manchester and then if nothing else comes in between now and then I'll have to look for another job. But on Thursday I've already got a full job booked which, is a, which I've had, had now for a month and every Thursday I do a round trip for a company in uh, just outside Stoke-on-Trent 
it's a regular Thursday full day and they've booked me for that up till New Year. So in essence all I need to do is cover Wednesday afternoon and try and get something down to Stoke and that sorts me Thursday out and then I'm near enough, you know Stoke's not that far from the northwest. So even if I run back Friday morning or Thursday night empty, I can either start the weekend early or even get another load after I've done my day in Stoke, pick something up to go to the northwest, or just go up to the northwest empty, plunk myself on, on limb Friday morning and just look for two or three locals and then go home. So in, in transport, I think as long as you're busy and your rates are, you know, you, you, you price the job right, there's no right and wrong way, there's just a, different ways. Everybody runs different, everybody's got different costs. And there's no right way and wrong way, as long as you can cover your costs, make profit, whether, you know, depending on how you feel, it could be a lot of profit, a little bit of profit, that's, you know, everybody's different, everybody knows what they want out of a job. As long as you can, your business model generates income, how can it be a flawed business model, especially after 12 months during a, a pandemic? I, I don't get it. You need to look at the wider picture, the bigger picture. There's kind of a need for everything. And again, I'm waffling on again. So, so yeah. So I'll, I'll unless I see uh, anything uh, or think of anything else worth waffling about, I'll leave that with you and uh, check in later on tonight, which will be Tuesday night. Right, so it's now Wednesday morning. I got to I got to Birmingham. Um, got loaded with the stuff for Sheffield. Drove up to Sheffield. M1 was shut, so it took me longer than uh, 
expected. The place at Sheffield closes around six o'clock. I got there about quarter to five, five o'clock, five o'clock. So it wasn't uh, it wasn't an issue. So I got unloaded at Sheffield and then spoke to the guys in the warehouse at Sheffield and they didn't know anything about the load going back to Manchester. Um, so the guy I dealt with rang his boss who finished for the day and gone home who said um, one of their drivers should have collected the stuff from sides out at one of their customers today collected it and brought it back to the warehouse for me to collect and take to Manchester and for one reason or another the goods didn't get collected from their customer um, and again it is a it is a lack of communication but it sometimes if, if you run out of a depot as a driver you get back late there's no there's you know your transport manager's not there your planner's not there or you know whoever deals with the runs has gone home a lot of drivers will just update their paperwork saying oh collection at such and such a point failed due to and then whatever the reason put that in with the paperwork chuck it on the office desk and go home without thinking that there was another journey kind of booked for for those goods but it's you know it's no big deal it's a regular customer they give me they give me they give me enough work so i'm not going to fall out about little things like that and that's that's one of the issues um if you have a trusted customer that uh, don't screw you down on price because they know you, you do a decent job if they give you enough work you're gonna you, you will have certain jobs or certain days where things don't go right so you don't really hold it against them because they've not you know they, they've not done it on purpose these things just happen now if it's a um, if, if it was a one-off delivery um, for a for a customer that was just a complete ad hoc job with and I'd, I'd never dealt with them before um, I may view it slightly different but because I know the way they work I haven't got an issue with it so anyway so that didn't happen so as I tipped in Sheffield at tea time um, I then drove to uh, the stockyard truck stop at Rotherham and spent the night here I am empty and I know earlier on I said when I am when I am empty I tend not to uh, pay for parking anywhere but on my way down to Birmingham I fueled up so I didn't want to park on the industrial estate at Sheffield with um, a full tank of diesel just in case I mean it was it was probably about six o'clock when I left and it was industrial estate in complete darkness and I was the only vehicle there so I thought I'm not uh, I'm not risking it um, so I came to the stockyard last last night had a carvery used my chainsaw to cut through the roast potatoes but other than that it was <laughs> it was all right um, and I don't know what it is and you, you, you probably experience it yourself if you go to bed at night and you know you've got to be up early in the morning even when you're asleep for some reason your body does let's say wake you up because you know you, you must have that nagging thing in your head all night even when you're asleep that right, I've got to get up I've got to get up I've got to get up anyway that uh, that didn't happen because I was empty because by the time I'd finished and parked up um, I just wanted to have a bit of time without doing the job if you know what I mean so all like I say I went in had something to eat got back in the truck watched a bit of telly went to bed um, and people can probably relate to this now that when uh, when you're parked up at night on the on the odd occasion you'll 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 go to sleep and you'll get waking up by the phone ringing and the boss saying where are you 
because you've overslept and you should have been up at six and it's half past nine. Um, but I don't have that. Um, I don't have that because I've not got a boss. So when I oversleep, there's there's no phone call to say, right, where are you? So at 10 o'clock this morning, I woke up. And luckily, I hadn't, I've not got a job booked. But I know for a fact that if I did have a job booked or I had goods on board, somehow my brain would have got me out of bed or I'd have at least listen to the uh, well took notice of my alarm clocks but uh, I must have needed it so it's no uh, it's no big deal and like I've, I've said I, I am other than now this morning I have I have been busy and sometimes you have you've just got to stop for two or three hours and just even if it's sat in the truck just have a bit of time just stirring out the I suppose stirring out the window just to just to recharge and take stock of everything so that's what I'm doing now got up at 10 o'clock went in had some breakfast come out done my vehicle checks replaced a bulb got a phone call off the set off off the my customer from yesterday um, because they might have a job from Birmingham up to Newton Aircliffe and they're kind of willing to book the job around me and my diary rather than them telling me when they need it doing. They obviously need it doing by a certain day or date um, so I've I've um, I've given them the option, I've given them a couple of options but it all depends on um, the customer where the goods are being delivered to. So one option is after tomorrow's, the th tomorrow's Thursday and I've got my regular Thursday run in and around Stoke, Coventry, Birmingham and back up to Stoke. So I've given them the option of when I've finished that, I can then run back down to Birmingham, collect the goods and deliver to Newton Aircliffe on, uh, let's say, Friday morning. Uh, yeah, Friday morning. So that's one option. And the other option is after the truck's due inspection next week. So I've got it booked in first thing Monday morning. In the garage that I use, I'll go in for when they open. I'll stay with the truck while they do the inspection because they'll get it in first and then I can leave with the truck so when I leave with the truck as long as there's no um, issues with the truck I've already got um, for the same customer that we're already talking about I've already got a job booked from Manchester to Colchester so in addition to Birmingham, Newton, Aircliffe, Thursday after I've done my Thursday run. The other option is go down to Colchester, obviously collect Monday, late morning, Monday dinner time, drive down to Colchester, tip cost Colchester Tuesday morning, then go to Birmingham, collect the new Newton Aircliffe and deliver that. I'm getting my days muddled up now. Duh, duh, duh. Wednesday morning because I'll probably not do I'll, I'll, there'll probably not be enough time to do well there'll be enough driving time and duty time it's just a lot of these places with there being smaller businesses are, they, you know they have them 7am till 5 8 till 5 6 till 4 kind of opening time so if I you know if I tip in uh, Colchester 8 9 o'clock Tuesday morning I've then got to get to Birmingham and up, up to Newton Aircliff. So those are the options at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is just go on one of the uh, online platforms and see if there's any see if there's any jobs from around Rotherham, Sheffield that can get me down towards 
stoke for tomorrow morning. It's not going to. It's not going to be a, a, a money generating day today, due to the fact I've stayed in bed. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not losing sleep over it because I needed. I needed the sleep. And um, like I say, sometimes you just need to recharge a little bit without going and going and going. Because when I am busy, it's just go, 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 go. I mean, let's give you an example. Let's have a look. I've got it all written in my diary here. Let's just pick a week. Let's see what we got here. Let's do... Let's do this one. So a few weeks ago, Monday, Lancaster to Leicester, then Nottingham to Bolton, then Trafford Park to Shrewsbury, then Tamworth to Stockton to Inverness, that was one job, then from Kinross down to Dewsbury, then from Dewsbury across to Leeds, collecting Leeds, delivered to Trafford Park, then from Trafford Park across to Altrincham, into Lancaster, d job, then another job collecting Lancaster, delivered to um, Rotherham, and then home. So, what did I do that week? That week, seven, 1,700 miles that week. I mean, it's not mega 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 miles so I ran oh, I didn't do any empty running that day. well I, I ran from kind of Preston up to Lancaster Monday morning empty to collect Lancaster then I went to Leicester then I ran empty from Leicester to Nottingham to pick up for Bolton the Buck Trafford Park empty Shrewsbury Tamworth empty all the way up to Inverness then Inverness down to Kim Ross empty, which ain't that far. So I probably ran at about 85-90% loaded miles that week. And then it was just the, the Friday after I'd finished at uh, Rotherham. I ran back to finish for the weekend, didn't I? So every, every, every week's kind of like that. So sometimes you've just got to, even if you've done a job in the morning, you pick your... You, you, you'll, you'll finish your job, park up at dinner time, have your 45 minutes and then just think, no, I'm going to just have an, a, another hour. But you can always add that hour on after, can't you? You, can, you know. But anyway, I've started laughing again, so I'm just going to have a look on um, online and see if there's anything. And I'll let you know what's happening in a minute. Right, so that's me Wednesday completely written off. I've made my way down to Utoxeter because there was nothing out of Rotherham or Sheffield earlier. I know it didn't help. Um, the fact that I had a lie-in. But you do tend to find whether or not I'd had the lie-in or not, you do get the odd day like this. Um, there was a couple of jobs I saw online that if I didn't have my regular Thursday run I could have done but because I'm committed to a full day on a Thursday I kind of have to work around that on a Wednesday because if I'd have got a, a, a load early from Rotherham to Glasgow that on, on Wednesday that knackers me up for the Thursday um, and like I say it's no big deal but when this does happen I, I always tend to make up for it anyway by um, maybe picking a job up on a Friday for a Saturday delivery 
or even starting early on a Sunday and you, 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 when you're doing this you can't I know I'm going to be repeating myself um, but bear in mind I'm filming this all over this week and I probably can't remember what I've already said on previous days um, so yes the, the, there is a certain amount that you need to bring in per day so there's a certain amount that you need to bring in per week which in turn means there's a certain amount you need to bring in per month but if you're just working on a daily basis thinking um, oh this is terrible I've not made anything today in essence it doesn't matter because your target is an average over I, I tend to work it over a month there's a certain figure I know I need to bring in to break even and there's a certain figure I aim for to make um, to make me profit so obviously the more jobs you do obviously there's you know the busier you are there's more profit um, so I'll, I'll easily make up today anyway so I've made my way down to Utoxeter and the regular run I do on the Thursday which is tomorrow the customer rang earlier to say they'd put an extra drop on which again isn't an issue I'm getting paid for the day and when I originally quoted um, for this particular work up and up until New Year um, we decided between us that because they actually said some some weeks you may have to do an extra collection or an extra delivery won't be too far off this kind of dedicated run that I'm doing but any extra um, drops they will reimburse me for and it's a reimbursement of my choosing not theirs now if I if I in, inflate the price too much just for I mean tomorrow I'm collecting in stock and then I'm supposed to be going to Coventry the extra drop is also in stock and going to the same place in Coventry so in essence as long as I get there and get loaded straight away which I probably will do they've got me for the day and it's not going to make any difference but they're adamant that they because they want to keep me happy they want to keep the cut every customer on the route happy the extra that they're paying that, that we've come to agreement with um, everybody's happy with so they've added that on for tomorrow the job to Newton Aircliffe from Birmingham after I've finished midday tomorrow hasn't come off because I've got another job on now on Friday some people ring me up ask for a price on a job and tell me they'll get back to me because the price might be a bit too high they've got to they've got to go away discuss it get back to me and um, do it that way but I, I do tend to work on a first come first basis sometimes because sometimes people ring ask for a price they'll go away They'll say, right, I'll ring you back within the hour with a, either a yes or a no, and they don't ring back. But during that hour, somebody else might have rang and said, we've got a job for you, it's yours if you can do it. So do I turn that one away, waiting for the first phone call to come back? Or do I commit to the guaranteed work? Well, it's got to the stage now where I was holding off and waiting for the original um, phone call to come back and when people 
don't want to use you, they, they don't even have the uh, the manners to ring you back and say, right now we've we've sorted it, we don't need you. So what I do now, when they ring, I'll say, right, ring me back within the hour, and I'm not. Um, I'll keep my diary open for that hour, and if you've not got back to me within the hour, if any other jobs come in, I'm going to take them because I can't afford. not to take on guaranteed work waiting for your work so that's what's happened today that customer even though they were regular and there were two options anyway so i might end up doing the newton aircliff next week after i've done colchester so once i've finished tomorrow it's then back up to lancaster for friday morning for the irregular customer, which I did out of Lancaster on Monday. So the Lancaster, Sheffield, Wakefield, Hull job, it's for the same customer. So they just rang an hour ago, asked if I could do it, gave them a price and they said, right, it's yours. So what I'll do tomorrow is finish my Thursday run, hopefully mid afternoon and try and get something from around Stoke-on-Trent up towards Lancaster or Manchester or Liverpool or whatever for either same day delivery or early Friday because I don't have to be in Lancaster till half nine um, but the Lancaster job are aware I'm running empty from Stoke-on-Trent Utoxeter um, and that's figured in with the um, the price anyway so even if I fly up to Lancaster empty I'm not missing out so what I've done now is I've just parked up on Utoxita services um, just preparing to collect in the morning so in the morning I'll be collecting about half six which ain't too bad so it's ups and downs with all with all businesses. You get your busy days and your quiet days. But like I say, most of the time it's about averages. So this week I need to average um, a particular amount. Now if I fall below that and have a great week next week and I had a great week last week, the average over the three weeks will be above my my target figure. So you, you've got to you've got to weigh all you've, you've you've got to look at it like that, and I mean long term, because now I, I've been trading a year. I know my average for the year, so you can go from I need to make so much a day, I need to make so much a week, so much a month, to I need to make so much per quarter to so much over the year, and an average. So in the last year, um, I made, well not say I made, I brought in, obviously any money coming in, there's a lot going out because you've got to pay, obviously I, I need a wage and there's fuel, insurance, tax, maintenance, MOTs, I've had a full set of tyres on. Um, any uh, um, repairs to the truck, overnight parking fees, tolls, you know, everything comes into it. So that, that's what you've got to weigh in to your, your average week. You need, need to bring in enough to cover all that, plus you obviously need to make a profit, otherwise it's not, it's not worth it. You're running a business, you're putting the hours in and the hard work. So you do need to show a profit because if you didn't, I'd just be employed somewhere earning a wage. Um, yeah, so over, over the last year, the, the, the averages came in above 
the target fee for running costs I, I averaged more and my actual target for a, a, a percentage per week per month per quarter um, I averaged more than anticipated so so far so good so that's where we're up to today Anyway, so if I relate to a direct customer, it's someone I'm in direct contact with, let's say. If it's not a direct customer, it's probably something I've picked up on one of the online platforms. So this week, the, the job from Glasgow on Friday down to Trafford Park... was for a customer that was originally a non-direct customer that I got via one of the online platforms and because they knew they could rely on me they never bothered putting the load on any of the online platforms and just rang me direct to see if I could do it so did that one then went up to Lancaster to do the, the, the ones in Yorkshire they're just direct, they just ring me when they've got work. Then when I went from Hull down to Birmingham delivery in Sheffield, that was for another direct customer that I used to work for when I was freelance driving. Tomorrow is another customer who I did a couple of jobs for via the online platform and now ring me direct and because they're happy with everything um, they ring me direct and offered me this every Thursday till till New Year and then on Friday back up to Lancaster it's obviously back to back to the other direct customer so th there's a bit of a mix when I'm in my own locality in the northwest I've kind of built a relationship with certain people who will who will ring to get me out of the northwest. But if I then end up in Scotland or South Wales or East Anglia or Kent or the South Coast somewhere like that, I tend to have to rely on the online platforms because I'm not really in direct cost uh, direct contact with people in those areas. But there's always the 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 off chance that one of my main customers in the northwest will have a you know will have a customer in Kent that that needs stuff bringing up to the northwest so sometimes I will do it that way but it tends to be the online platform to get me back home or out of a particular area but it's all about built doing a good job at a decent price that suits everyone um, keeping in contact with those people and basically just providing a decent service because even even the stuff the other day um, they, they really struggle for people to do the job correctly because it involves a bit of handball and there's some site deliveries the amount of drivers I've been told that turn up and say, well, it was the same when I delivered to the farm yesterday. Um, the guy there, he was saying the amount of people who, who come, they look at the lane and they'll just say, oh, I'm not driving down there, I'm not driving down there. Well, I drove down. I mean, you couldn't physically get down in an Arctic. So I'm in, I'm in the next size biggest vehicle. Um, so prior on the phone, it was, yeah, it's a bit tight, you can get down. You drive into the farmyard, you can turn round and drive back out. So when I turned up, yes, it was tight. Got in, got down, helped unload, turned round and came out and got the job done and everyone's happy. But I think there's too many drivers who either just look at something and say, nope, not doing it, not going down there. And then if they do go down, 
they'll just turn up, open the back doors or open the curtains, jump back in the cab and expect the customer to throw everything off. And that's that's fair enough if you're an RDC backed on a loading bay or in a curtains open and they've got fart lifts. But if you're doing a site delivery on behalf of someone where there's two or three fitters doing a job, whether it's windows, doors, you know, st obviously really, really heavy stuff. You can't, you, you need the fart lift or a machine of some sort to, to unload you. But if again, if you sure willing and you, do, you know, I'm not talking about I'm balling and then you start carrying stuff, you know, across something the size of a, f a football pitch and, and throwing it in a unit. I'm just on about jumping on the back of the truck, maybe sliding stuff to the back doors for them to for them to carry in. You know, it's not it's not that difficult. And when you do it, and if it's a regular customer, and you're the guy who just cracks on and gets it done. You're the guy that isn't constantly ringing up the office whinging and complaining about every delivery. If you're the guy that the customer requests next time they have a site delivery, you're just generating yourself more work. More income, more money. And don't get me wrong, I kind of, I hate doing it. I don't hate doing it, but like most people, you know, you, you'd choose the easy life, wouldn't you? But... You, you, you can't always do that. If I have a choice to sat around all day doing nothing, or picking up a load that's three drops and it's three or four drops and all on farms and you know it's just going to be a pain in the ass, and the money's right, you, you, you've got to do it, that's, you've, that's your job, that's, that's the whole reason of being, you, you're a transporter, you, you move things from A to B, and sometimes that'll involve getting your finger out of your backside and just giving someone a lift, and I've never been in favour of this, oh well, I'm not doing it, it's not my job. You know, these clock card happy places that you go to where, oh no, I'll finish in 10 minutes, can't unload you. Or, oh no, you'll have to bring it tomorrow because we're all going home. Or, no, that's not my job, you, you'll have to do it. Or, that guy will, over there will have to do it. That's not my job, I'm not, that's not my pay grade, that's not what I do. Well, I don't look at it like that. I, I, I look at it as if I turn up to site and some guy's unloading, I'm a working bloke helping out some other working bloke. Just crack on and get the bleeding job done. Just help each other out. I think there's too much of this. Compute, sorry, computer says no. When really, I look at it as working bloke, uh, well, these are working bloke, working lady, helping out another another per just because they're not doing the same job as you doesn't mean you can't help them out and they can't help you out you find the job gets a lot easier and it'll get done quicker but anyway right that's it for tonight anyway right just a quick progress report more than anything it's now um, late morning on Thursday Started at Utoxeter, did the collection in Utoxeter, a bit of faffing about in Stoke-on-Trent with the uh, two separate locations, I'm on now, now on my way down to Coventry. Normally on the run, I get back to Utoxeter with about four hours, 15 driving. Um, but because I did the extra drop in Stoke, I mean it only took me maybe 15-20 minutes off the A500. I just don't want to be caught short on my way back so I've stopped at Stafford for a brew and a 45 minute break so that'll now give me plenty of time to run down to Coventry as long as there's no major incidents on the motorway. It'll get me down to Coventry. Excuse me where I'll unload the goods I've got on, reload at the same place 
and then go back up to Utoxeter. Right, so that got unloaded there, and then the plan was to collect from the same place and go back up to Utoxeter. But the goods, again, the, the goods I was supposed to be collecting got collected yesterday, so there was nothing to be picked up. And in this instance, the customers booked me for the day, so that, that benefits me because my day ended early because they couldn't provide me with the um, the rest of the day's work so then my day stopped let's say two and a half hours before expected and I'll still bill the customer for the full day so after tipping that informing everybody what had uh, what had happened and to be fair to be fair to them when I rang to say there was nothing to go, to go back, they, they actually they actually knew and they'd, well, say to be fair to them, they forgot to tell me, but it's no issue because I was already there on site. Um, just give us a sec, I'm a bloke, I can't multitask. Talking and driving in a straight line is all right, but anything else.
right so all that got sorted day finished early but just out of pure luck um, I got a phone call off one of the other customers that uh, ring me when they the, the, the loads are too big or too heavy for the vehicle or they've not got one of their vehicles in the area to ask um, where I was so I told them it, I was in Coventry and um, bear in mind to, tomorrow's run is collect out of Lancaster so as I previously said I was either going to run up empty from Coventry to Lancaster tonight ready for tomorrow morning or try and get something well luckily this customer rang and uh, needed two collections doing one in Birmingham just at Aston which is just off the M6 which is handy and I'd have been driving past it anyway and another thing people when it's really really sunny put your headlights on I know that might not make any sense but your lights aren't just there to light the road up when it's dark it's all sorts of um, enables people to see you when there's a really low sun whether it's sunrise or sunset we've all been there squinting in the mirror or squinting squinting driving forwards because you can't see because of because of the sun and they're not then all of a sudden there's a car there well if that car had its headlights on you'd see it wouldn't you it's like now I'm, I'm looking in my mirror and the only cars i can see in this this outside lane are the ones with the lights on and i mean a lot of running around with daytime running lights anyway but like this Audi coming up now i never saw this car then when the sun were in the ice but those two i did um, right, so, yeah, so the plan was to run up to Lancaster empty and then do my day's work tomorrow or try and find something up to Lancaster because I didn't have to start tomorrow's run until half nine. Anyway, so they, these people have rang me up. Collection in, uh, like I say, Aston. Collection at Wensbury. So for those that don't know, that they're basically on the M6 on the way up and that's going to Warrington and it's delivered tonight so I've collected I've done them both and now I'm just on my way to um, jump on the M6 and, and it's just gone four o'clock so I should, I should be should be in Warrington for about half five so that'll that kind of makes up for yesterday's not having, a, not having a job on. So today I've earned, obviously not telling you how much, but I've I've earned a full day rate off, off someone. And then this job, which is two collections and then delivered to Warrington. So I've not done too bad. In a way, it nearly makes up for, not quite, but it nearly makes up for having yesterday off. Well, say yesterday off, not not having a job yesterday. So that's uh, that's where we're up to.
Right, this is another one of them nights where I've, where I've ended up paying for parking somewhere when I went earlier on I said uh, I tend not to when I'm empty but the thing is I've got to oh, I don't know I keep repeating myself I've got to I've got to be in Lancaster for half nine in the morning just tipped at uh, Warrington then and it's just one junction down to limb truck stop so I thought I'll come on limb's truck stop because um, the truck needs a wash anyway so I thought I'll, I'll, I'll stay on limb tonight get the truck washed in the morning before I go up to um, before I go up to Lancaster because like I said I don't have to be there for half nine so I can be up you know I don't have to be up too early get the truck washed and have some breakfast and then fly on up there so and it's getting on a bit now, it's it's half seven and I started at six this morning, so the the other option was to go up to um if anyone knows the James Hall Spa distribution and uh centre at Preston. On the plot you've got the you you've you've got the distribution centre. Um that's standing there in its own right and then next door you've got um, I mean it's part of the same plot really they, 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 they must own it or have a franchise with the with with Shell or something because it's um, a little spa supermarket as well and there's you know 10 11 HGV pumps a proper petrol station overnight parking which isn't too expensive um, you, you can't get a lot of trucks on um, and the thing with it, it's right off the motorway if, you, if you're heading north there's a slick road onto it but if you want to get back on north there isn't a slick road and if you're coming south you can't exit but you can get back on south so I think a lot of people uh, give it a miss but um, o over the past year, I've, I've used it quite a lot because, like I say, it's quite handy where it is, um, just off the M6 at Preston. Um, so I stayed there quite a lot. I had nights out, so I'm paying for nights out. Used to fuel the truck up there as well, and because it's a, a, a half deep for a petrol station, service station, the supermarkets pretty well stocked. So you know, I spent quite a lot of money over, over you know, up there, and then. The other week when we had the fuel crisis, well, say fuel crisis, the fu the, the tanker driver crisis. Um, I can't remember whether I was going up or down, and I thought, well, I'll nip in there for the night anyway. I need to stock up on stuff for me and fuel up. So as I pulled in, the actual, let's say, the petrol station cars. The, 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 the car bit that was that was all closed but all the HGV pumps were open so I uh, pulled on one of the pumps went in with my card and they refused to sell me any diesel they were only allowing the James Hall spa trucks to, to fill up e everyone else they weren't um, they were turning away so that kind of put me back up a bit because there's a there's a hell of a lot of a truck sorry there's a hell of a lot of trucks going to James Hall distribution centre with their stuff. They've got um, HGV fuel pumps outside and they're not letting anyone. I say they're theirs. This it's Shell. It's branded as Shell. So it, like I say, it might be a franchise. So I thought that was a bit naughty really because you can bet some people have delivered in there thinking oh I'll, I'll fuel up. You know they could have driven from I don't know Fraser Brew with fish or something for 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 um, or whiskey or anything like that D down to Preston and then you need to top your tanks up or even fill up. They've, they've got fuel and they're turning you away and you you, you you're the one that's just been delivering their goods to them so they can go out and stock their supermarket so I've kind of fallen out for it with it for a bit 
so that's why I've stopped on Lynn. But I saw a post on Facebook the other night where someone had had the diesel nicked on here. And there's an odd curtain slash, so I'll need to be wary about that. Right, so that's it, that's it for today anyway. So as you saw, Friday, ended up washing the truck at Lim, but it were, it were one of them days, it was dark all day, it was raining, it, were, it was a horrible day and I was just doing the same thing I did on Monday and Tuesday morning, so it's now the following Monday. So what I did after washing the truck was just go up to... Um, Got up to Lancaster, should have picked one, two, three, four, five drops. There were only four ready, so I had uh, two in Blackburn. One in Wigan, one in Skem. Should have had one in Lee, but that didn't happen. And then back to the yard and that was it. So I've just run down this morning, uh, like I say Monday morning again, the following week. Truck was in for inspection this morning. The last time it was inspected six weeks ago it was also MOT'd. So really the chance of anything flagging up was um, quite slim. So they did the inspection this morning. They, which was, went all right. Not even any minor jobs needed doing. Uh, so took it in the garage this morning, sat with it while they did the inspection, and then ran just straight down to Trafford Park where I've just been loaded for Colchester tomorrow morning. That's it. That's a week and a bit and that's what I do. And like I say, now you know what I do. Next video I'll probably delve into it a little bit more and we'll talk about the what you need what kind of person you need to be more importantly to, to, to maybe do this. So one last thing, I think out of all the jobs last week I don't think there were any I got direct off any of the online platforms, they were all people that I've either been dealing with prior to getting my own vehicle or people I dealt with initially via the online platforms who now ring me direct. So all I'll do now, once I get uh, further down the uh, 
M6, maybe get to the other side of Birmingham. I'll just have another look online and see if there are any loads tomorrow or Tuesday coming out of Essex. And they don't necessarily have to be back up to the northwest, they could be there to Cornwall, South Wales, top of Scotland, North East, you know, anywhere. We're at the beginning of the week, so it doesn't really matter, it's just towards the end of a week. You try and find those loads that, that get you back somewhere within um, home. So, right, well, thanks for watching, and um, I don't know what else to say. If I do say anything else, I'll just be waffling on as normal, so I think we'll just leave it at that. So, uh, thanks again. I'll try and make it interesting, but, you know, obviously, truck driving, you know, if you've not an interest in driving, if you've not an interest in the way the business works, the videos are going to be boring anyway. But if you're genuinely interested, you may find them educational, I don't know, you might just think I'm waffling nonsense, so, you know. But remember, everyone's different. If you, if you see something on any of my videos that you don't agree with, that's fair enough, and by all means, comment. But don't tell me I'm doing it wrong, I'm just doing it different. So that's it. Cheerio. I knew I'd end up saying something else. So from the beginning of the video, where I was already loaded from Glasgow, which I picked up on the Friday, then I did all the week, all the work last week, now it's Monday the following week and like I said I'm on my way to Colchester every job involved the customer ringing me and asking if I was available to move the goods and on every occasion they asked me what my price would be to move those goods. There wasn't one occasion where someone rang up and said, we've got a load and it pays such and such an amount. So nobody dictated the rate to me. I was the one that said, if you want me to do it, I am available, I can be available, and the price will be whatever the price quoted and not one person having quoted the price even tried to knock me down or anything they were just happy that I could do the job at an half decent price so when people tell you there's no money they always say no money in haulage well if you delve into a bit in, into transport a bit I've said before there's lots of People just think that every truck you see on the roads in, involved in general haulage. But you, you need to define what general haulage is. I'm not going to get into it now, but I don't class myself as doing general haulage. So, anyway, that's it. I just thought I'd let you know that all week, well, all last week, all the week before, all the week before, all the week going back as far as possible I've been the one quoting the price there's been a couple of jobs I've done where the customers told me what the uh, what they were willing to pay and when I worked it out <laughs> that would have been more than I charged anyway so win win as far as I can see Right, that's definitely it. GBO. Right, so just another update. Um, having gone to Colchester, delivered at Colchester on Tuesday morning, then did the... Um, Sorry, packed up at Ipswich on the Monday night, delivered into Colchester Tuesday morning, 
then drove down to Chelmsford services where I could park up, have something to eat and then um, look online and make a couple of phone calls. What I decided to do was just have a quick look online and luckily there was a load out of Whittam which is between Colchester and uh, Chelmsford and there was a job for these 16 pallets that you can see being unloaded behind um, from Whittam across to um, Gloucestershire. So that was 16 pallets. As soon as I went into Whittam, they got loaded straight away. I arrived here about 20 minutes ago, and as you can see, the truck's nearly empty. Um, so all we had on here was 16 pallets of board games that are being um, secretly stored here for Father Christmas, ready, ready for Christmas, just to... Uh, <laughs> All right, bloody hell, <laughs> doing that on purpose now, right, uh, yeah, so we're helping Father Christmas out <laughs> delivering these board games to uh, Gloucestershire, um, it's now Wednesday morning and obviously I've filmed way more than a week's worth of uh, worth of work so I just thought I'd let you know that even though we're seeing the bulk of absolutely everything is um, through direct customers this is an example of just a, a quick look online um, identifying a job getting on with it so all I have to do now with it being Wednesday morning is look for something up towards um, Stoke on Trent again the north side of Birmingham um, ready for my regular Thursday. So I just thought I'd uh, let you know that occasionally I do get stuff from the online platforms.